Hey guys, welcome back to the lab. Today at the bench, we're color matching the replacement spine piece, applying the new overhanging linen lining, reapplying the original end bands, and adhering the new paper lining to this large 1890s family Bible. So I'll start off by color matching the original leather. I'm using acrylic paint on a heavier long fiber paper. And this paper, the advantage over leather, in my opinion, is that it is more flexible than leather. It is thinner, but it's still strong. And it doesn't have as much potential to harden over time like leather does. And once that leather hardens, um, it loses flexibility and it can crack again uh, faster, in my opinion, at the joints of this book. And another advantage of this paper is that it is weaker than the original leather and so it should prevent damage to the original because if it were harder it might actually break the original materials and that can be a uh, risk when you're using something that's like super strong and pairing it with antique materials. And I don't like the glossy brushstroke finish, so I just kind of use a sea sponge and give it a little bit of a texture. And now I'm gonna let that dry and move on to the lining on this text block. So if you'll remember from the previous episode, um, I need to maintain the curve of the spine and the shoulder region while I'm putting this into the press. And um, I can't do that uh, with just my two hands. So I actually clamp the book with a um, bar clamp and make sure everything is sitting how I want it to sit. And then I open up the press and put the book in and you will notice, um, so it's already got one lining on it. If you remember from the last episode, it's the um, Tingujo and paste lining. And you'll see when I remove the bar clamp that the text block spreads a little bit, but it still holds together just fine. Um, there's not gaps between the sections um, as there would be without any lining. And so that first lining, even though it's fairly delicate, holds up really well. So now I have my linen and I am fitting it and cutting it. So this particular linen is kind of a specialty product um, designed for conservation and book binding. Um, it is made without um, certain additives, I think, that other linens may have that uh, can cause them to be a little weaker. And so you can see that I wet the linen um, using filtered water because I just need it damp. What I don't need is when I apply this water-based adhesive, um, I don't need for the linen, because it's bone dry, I don't need it to soak up, just suck all the water out of my adhesive, or it will, um, take me forever to get this piece of linen to adhere to the book because it acts like a sponge. And so I just get it damp. You saw me roll it up and squeeze all that water out and uh, press it. And I didn't really get it super wet to begin with. So now I'm applying PVA to the spine and this is what I will use to adhere this overhanging linen lining.
Okay, and now I am laying that damp linen on top and removing any loose threads. And I'm taking a Teflon folder and just pressing it. I wanna make sure I have really, really good contact with the back of the spine. And I have found that if I put another layer of PVA on the outside, it helps draw the PVA underneath through the linen really well. So I just put a little bit on the outside as well. And then you'll see me run over it with my folder one more time. And as I've mentioned previously, um, the reason I like this spine lining order with the Tengujo and paste on the bottom is that in the future, if a conservator needs to redo this book, I mean, it will eventually come apart. Nothing lasts forever. Um, they can actually pull on this linen lining and it and everything above it will come off theoretically because um, that Tengujo should delaminate and leave some long fibers on the book and some on the back of the linen. And then to get back down to a clean spine again, they could just repoultice in the same way that I cleaned this spine to start with. All right, so now that that's on, I am going to apply um, this release layer, which is that um, t-shirt screen printing um, woven Teflon material that I really like. And I'm gonna try to weight it with these lead diving weights, but it doesn't have good contact over on the edges of the curve of the spine. And so um, I'm gonna waffle a little bit and then think about it and then decide to um, pin it in place with an ace bandage. And this is a nice uh, trick I like to use for oversized books to ensure really good um, surface area and contact. So I let that dry overnight. I come back the next day, remove the ace bandage and the release layer. And then I make sure that no adhesive got past the shoulders um, onto the pages of the book. Nothing is stuck. And similarly to the linen, because these end bands are also cloth, I will come in with a little bit of water and let them sit and become a little more flexible um, and also rehydrated so that they aren't like little sponges pulling all the water out of my PVA when I go to adhere them on, because it will take probably four times as long and they might not stick as well. So I'm checking to see how flexible they are and the answer is not quite enough. So I'm gonna put a little more um, water on these. And I'm really careful to avoid the colored part that's not being adhered to the book because I am pretty sure, or I'm concerned that this, um, the color, especially the red might bleed. All right, so those are ready. And so I'm gonna apply PBA to, I think I'm starting with the tail of the book. And then I'm going to apply the PBA to the in band. 
And these in bands, sometimes um, order is less obvious as to where they need to live. Um, this one was really obvious because the um, in band at the tail of the book actually was broken from where um, the book had been leaned on it, like when somebody opened it and then tilted it towards them, probably. It's just a guess on my part, but it makes um, reasonable sense. And so I wanted to put that in band that was broken back um, where it came from. So again, I try a diver's weight and I hate it. And so I am gonna come back in with the ace bandage to hold this in place. Um, and make sure it has good contact while I apply the other end band to the head of this book. And I'm sorry about the autofocus applying the end band to the head of the book. I was trying a new angle and I have since changed the filming setup in here to be more ergonomic for me. So hopefully I won't have those problems in the future. So I just use the weight to hold that uh, piece of release material in place while I apply the ace bandage yet again so this can dry. And the downside of the release layer is that it is very slick on this ace bandage and so I have to make sure um, that it doesn't uh, snap loose over the book. And I check one more time to make sure everything is lined up where it should be, because while I can peel these off, I would prefer not to. And I come back later that evening after everything is dry. make sure everything is well adhered on the edges. And then I measure for the paper spine lining that is going to be applied next. So I'm gonna fit it by width and then fit it by height. And then go get my adhesive. And notice when I paste this out, the way that this paper curls um, indicates paper grain. So most paper um, has grain, especially if it's machine made and um, you can Google that and read about it, but basically when it's being made, the fibers are moving at a high rate of speed and they tend to align in the direction of the movement of the machine. And it impacts how the paper behaves when it gets wet. It will curl usually in a certain direction uh, versus the other direction. And as you can see, that curled into a tube and that is the grain direction I need to apply this piece of paper to the spine. So I want it to curl like a paper towel tube and not like a snail, uh, which is really weird, but I need it to curl in that direction so that the grain is running in the same direction as the spine sections. And if it's not, the paper grains um, of the layers like below and above 
because they're crossed, um, they can wrinkle really bad and warp and do really um, interesting and unwelcome things. And so I am careful to match my paper grain and it becomes obvious pretty quickly to me if I have messed that up and those pieces get pulled off and go in the trash can for me to try again. And I've gotten to the point that I um, will often mark like the top piece of material and leave it um, for different papers and boards in the lab uh, so that I know which direction the grain runs just by looking at the top piece and then I'll pull from underneath. All right, guys, thanks for watching this episode. Tune in next time as we construct the hollow tube on this book and reattach the original boards to the new overhanging linen lining. Subscribe to show the lab some love and to catch every episode. Don't forget to ask any questions you have below. Thanks.